In today's video, we're going to talk about dizziness disorders, specifically cervicogenic dizziness, a dizziness that can be triggered by a neck problem, as well as a true vestibular dizziness that can be caused from a disturbance with the ear and the nerves of the ear. Can we have two different things at the same time? And how do we tease that out? Let's get into the video. And we're going to take a look. So Lily, I'm making a video about having two medical problems at the same time, but I need some creative ideas. What do you think? Can you help? Two things at the same time. Two things at the same time? Yeah, I think I can help, Dad. You got it. Well, welcome back to another episode of Physio Tips with Mauro. I'm your host, Mauro Burnett. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm a board-certified orthopedic specialist in physical therapy and the owner of Australian Physiotherapy Specialists located here in Jacksonville, Florida in the USA. I've been practicing physical therapy for about 22 years, and as a part of my practice, I've seen a lot of patients with cervicogenic headaches, cervicogenic dizziness, as well as other types of vestibular disorders. So in today's video, I'm going to address a question that I hear frequently from my patients. Is it possible that I could have a vestibular dysfunction and also have cervicogenic dizziness at the same time? Two different problems at the same time. And the answer to that is, yes, it is possible to have two different disorders at the same time. I'm going to go over a great case example of a patient that I saw last year. This particular patient came in. She was diagnosed with Meniere's disease 15 years ago. Meniere's disease is a vestibular disorder that accompanies hearing loss, and one of the symptoms is dizziness. Doesn't have a great prognosis, unfortunately, and a lot of folks live with this every day. It can be pretty terrible. Um, so her dizziness was fairly mild for a long time, and then maybe just two years ago, she noticed a large uptick in dizziness. Um, immediately, she thought to herself, this is probably related to my Meniere's disease that I've been living with all this time. She gets sent to physical therapy. I get a chance to treat her. And as I examine this patient, I notice she has a very obvious neck problem, specifically on her left side. She can barely turn her neck to the left. Her neck strength is very deficient. The joints of her upper neck are very tight and sore. Most of her imbalance and dizziness is off to the left side, and coincidentally, that's the exact side that she had all the neck problems on. So we threw some treatment at her. We got her neck stronger. We loosened up the joints of her upper neck. We did some exercises to help her position sense awareness, and she had a fantastic outcome. The dizziness was so much less at the end, she couldn't believe it. So that was a great happy ending, but it really puts the question, can I have one disorder, like a vestibular disorder like Meniere's, but also have cervicogenic dizziness? Clearly, in this case, she did. And that's very important. If you're out there and you're suffering from dizziness, you could have a diagnosed a disorder like Meniere's or some other vestibular problem, but it is very possible that you could develop problems with your neck. So we did a video a few years back, uh, maybe a year or so ago back, actually, where we did some best tests for seeing if you possibly have cervicogenic dizziness. In the video, we go over the signs and symptoms of cervicogenic dizziness. We talk about some home tests that you can do. I'm going to put a link to that in the description of the video that you can click into it. But in general, the signs of cervicogenic dizziness is a dizziness or disequilibrium. It's usually not a severe spinning 30-second vertigo, although neck dysfunction can cause similar symptoms. But typically what you're going to have is I feel off, I feel dizzy, it's provoked by awkward neck movements or forward bending, rolling in bed, and it doesn't accompany obvious signs of dysfunction to the ear, like an obvious ear infection or hearing loss. Those are going to be your classic signs of cervicogenic dizziness. 
Now, I wanted to give a bonus technique that we can do if you maybe look at the video and you think, hey, I possibly could have cervical ejectosis. My symptoms kind of fit that bill. And you notice, for example, that you have a loss of rotation or that you're dizzy when you rotate in one particular direction. If that's the case, we can take a medium-sized hand towel, and what we're interested in is the sewn edge of the towel. I take the sewn edge, I put it at the base of my head, right where my earlobes are, and I put it in line with the tip of my nose. Let's go with a scenario that I have dizziness turning to the left. Here's the trick. I drop the left side, I reach over, grab the towel, now it's kind of lined up with the tip of my nose. I'm going to come underneath and just hold the towel here to make sure it stays in place. I keep it close to my cheek. It's hard to tell, but I'm not pulling it too hard in this direction, but I also don't want there to be slack. I kind of make it snug up against my cheekbone. I look to the left and I allow the towel to take me to the left as far as I can comfortably without dizziness or tightness. Obviously, we don't want it to have pain or, or disequilibrium with it. So I could do up to six reps as long as it's pain free. When you're first time doing it, I recommend maybe just do a couple reps and then reassess and see how your neck feels. If you notice that you could move further with less pain and dizziness, then that is a good sign. Then you could move up to six reps in one set. You could easily do this two or three times a day. I've had patients do it four or five times a day. I've had patients bring a little towel to work with them. And when they notice, they get up in the morning, they're feeling kind of bad, they loosen their neck up, they feel a bit better. Maybe at 10 o'clock during their work day, they notice they're starting to feel stiff and painful again, and they would do it again. So it's a safe procedure as long as we follow those rules. It doesn't increase pain or dizziness. It was invented by a famous therapist named Brian Mulligan many years ago. And it's been on many clinical research studies helping cervicogenic dizziness. So that's your bonus technique. Give it a try. If it makes you feel better, keep it. If it makes you feel bad, disregard it. Well, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We appreciate it. Remember to like the video and to subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time on Physio Tips with Mara. So Lily, I'm making a video about having two medical problems. Why are you laughing? There's no reason. Lily, I'm making a video about having two medical problems at the same time, but I need some creative ideas. What do you think? Can you help? Hmm. Two ideas at the same time. Oh, two things at the same. That's okay, because guess what? We're gonna um God! God. I didn't scream because I'm better than everybody else, but <laughs>